Today is Sunday, August 27th, and all eyes remain on now newly formed tropical storm Idalia. She's churning her way in the Caribbean, and it looks like she might be slowing down after misbehaving once again overnight and into today, moving due east nearly towards the Cuban island. Will this deviate the track substantially as we go over the next 24-48 hours? Let's take a look at all the latest information and see what we can make sense of between real-time data and the models that continuously play catch-up as we go moment by moment. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for another episode of Weather Center Nazario. Since awaking this morning, I've been very, very, very closely monitoring the satellite imagery, both visible and infrared, as well as a lot of real-time analysis data that we've been getting from the start of the day. As of now, it looks like Tropical Storm Hedalia has finally situated herself over the uppermost portion of the Western Caribbean after jogging pretty predominantly off to the east for a large majority of this Sunday morning into the afternoon. How will this possibly transform where we see a Florida landfall? Will this continue to move further eastward or will it suddenly boomerang back to the north like most of the models are still indicating? Everybody, before we dig deep into this information, I would like you to please like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so already, and make sure that you have your notifications turned on as we continue to amp up the amount of information we pump out from this channel as we go through the next couple of days. All that being said, this concludes the introduction of episode 12 of Weather Center. Let's fasten our seatbelts, folks, and take a look at what we've got today. Here we are. So we're looking at a broad overview of the Gulf of Mexico. This is your visible satellite. This has been a wonderful tool for really picking apart exactly where this storm has meandered and traveled over the last 12 hours. On the right hand side of the screen you can see approaching major Hurricane Franklin continuing to work its way off to the northwest really rapidly intensifying an excellent and very healthy looking storm. Winds are already in the triple digits and he is anticipated to make major hurricane strength over the next 12 to 24 hours. Down here this this fairly organized center of circulation is now Tropical Storm Idalia. And folks, just to get you caught up on the situation, this is where we were this time yesterday and most of the day yesterday. We have now meandered off to the southeast, and this is where we sit now. The consensus with the track is still anticipating some sort of a northward jog and eventually an eastward transition. However, will this eastward fetch? make a bit of a difference in terms of our landfall that still remains to be seen guys but as you can see she is really hungry she is really growing she is really rapidly intensifying and is really developing that symmetry as we go hour by hour i've been watching the satellite all day and she's done nothing but further organize especially as the convection begins to wrap in around all sides of the storm we transition over to windy.com here is our center of circulation very close very organized very concentrated this is showing wonderful stack from the 925 level all the way up through to 400 millibars. We are starting to see a semblance of a closed low all the way up to the jet level at 300 millibars. She, she is definitely stacking. She is definitely deepening. I anticipate we're going to have a stronger tropical storm before the sun sets tonight over to the eastern part of the United States. This is where we were yesterday. Once again, just to reiterate how much of a southeastward transition we've had, we've definitely done a nice southward and eastward track. If I draw a 90 degree angle, we've gone from up here to the north down over even more water in terms of the Caribbean Ocean, closer to our deepest and hottest ocean heat content, which is very interesting. I think that's also what's helping to sustain this storm a lot more than when we saw it closer to the Yucatan yesterday. Let's go over to Weather Nerds. I want to take a look at the latest ensemble runs because, guys, there have been some transitions and some trends that have really shown themselves as of recently. So let's zoom in on the state of Florida, and there you have it. Once the screen updates, you can see that we still have an enormous spread from the big bend of the peninsula of Florida, and now we actually have a few ensemble members indicating southwestern Florida may need to watch out. The main takeaway from this screen, though, guys, is there's still so much gray area, so much gray area and so much wobbling back and forth that this system is going to do that it is an injustice to everyone watching to say this is where we're going to see the most impacts this is where we're going to see the least amount of impacts in my professional and personal humble opinion everywhere from panama city all the way through the big bend down through Tampa, and just to the south of Tampa. I'm not going to rule in Fort Myers, Sarasota just yet. Just yet. If we continue to see an eastward wobble closer to the Cuban island, then maybe we can bring them back into business. But as of right now, this whole general region, I think, really needs to be watching closely and keeping up with these updates on a day-to-day -day and almost hour-by-hour -hour basis. 
Moving right along, I'm going to Weather Prediction Center now. Weather Prediction, I think, is going to be very pivotal here. This is our surface mock analysis charts. Surface charts made from the synoptic level that are going to continue out for about a seven-day period. If we go forward in time, you can see that we do have our frontal boundary situated over the southeastern quadrant of the United States. Most recent analysis interpretation has this stalling out for a little while. However, if I go between one iteration of these charts to the next, I believe there is a little bit of discontinuity between analyst interpretation. At 12Z on Tuesday, we have what looks to be a weak wave forming along this baroclinic zone of temperature discontinuity, which would indicate some temperature advection, or in layman's terms, just a simple movement of colder air behind this cold front. And what that would tell me is we have a trough continuing to dig southward. However, going back in time, it looks like the analyst does not want to move it, and in fact retrogrades it just a little bit as that stable wave begins to develop along the frontal line. You Fast forward to 12 Zulu Wednesday, however, and we're starting to see some more potent advection take place. This is critical. I bring this up because timing is going to be key here. The National Hurricane Center, with their most recent advisory, has now moved landfall from about 8 to 10 p.m. Tuesday night to 7, 8 a.m. Wednesday morning. The longer this storm decides to hang out to the south, the more influence that polar high pressure to the north over the Great Lakes, surging southward with that associated cold front on its leading edge, is going to play a bigger role on how far to the north or how far to the east this system decides to track. Couple with the influence of Franklin off to its northeast, which I think is also helping to influence a bit of this eastward fetch that we've been seeing most of the day today. Taking another glance at the model data, I've been using this for quite a little bit of time as well. You can kind of see where our front is situated as of now. We have northerly winds off that high pressure ridge. Coming down towards the Gulf Coast, I believe that Texas, most of Louisiana, and Mississippi have already seen frontal passage, so it looks like there is still some decent temperature advection going on. And whether we get a secondary cold push upstream of this main frontal boundary or this front stagnates before beginning another southeastward plunge towards Florida remains to be seen, but these are going to be our two main entities to watch. The timing on Adali as she comes to the north, when she comes to the north, and a little bit of semblance of what Franklin does, because you can see they are starting to butt up against one another. So with that being said, let's go to the 12 kilometer NAM. Yes, I'm using the NAM because the NAM is somewhat more reliable with baroclinic features, jet associated features, not tropical features. I'm definitely not using this to get an idea of what our tropical systems are doing. I'm using this to monitor that temperature advection and see what the higher resolution NAM models are thinking in terms of our stable wave, which looks to be taken shape somewhere in this general region, which would technically mean that we have a little bit more temperature advection getting ready to kick off to its western side. Going forward, you can see that we start to see Adalia come into this AOI, and there is a large swath of precip button up against that frontal boundary. So as they move south, how fast of an eastward jog are we going to see as that front comes down? It's all a holding pattern, just as I mentioned yesterday. I hate to sound like I'm repeating myself, but that's essentially the bottom line as of today. We've seen some very interesting trends in the live data associated with this storm, with the reconnaissance data, as well as some of the models starting to push a little further to the east. We're only going to look at one high-resolution hurricane model. I still have a small level of distrust for all of the computer models, whether they be high-res hurricane or our larger-scale operational models, just because a lot of them, especially the likes of the GFS, the CMC, and the Euro, are very severely underestimating the intensity of what kind of a storm we have now, and I do believe that's translating to what the future cast looks like in the next two to three days. I only bring this up because I want you to watch the loop as we get closer to landfall in the Florida Peninsula. This is still trending towards the Big Bend area, but guys, take a look at that central pressure. This is a 944 millibar major hurricane. I'm going to switch my color so I can really get in there and highlight it. I'm seeing 944 millibars well before this thing makes landfall. Let's go forward in time, and we continue to see a little bit of deepening just before she finally makes her way on shore. This is 941 millibars. That is a whopping cat for hurricane, a major hurricane working its way into the Big Bend region. According to the HAFS A model, the HAFS B has been trending the same, and the HWERF has predicted an even slightly deeper major catastrophic, I'm not even going to say major, I'm going to talk over myself, a catastrophic storm working its way somewhere into the northern portions of Florida. So folks, if you aren't paying attention to the state of emergency, if you aren't keeping tabs on these YouTube updates, on your broadcast networks, anywhere you can get your weather information, you need to start taking a quick glance. I'm not asking you to obsess over it like we are. That's Leave that up to us. I simply urge you to look into things 
just for a brief moment, just to get some situational awareness on the big picture of what's expected to happen. Because as you can see here, this is Sig Zulu Wednesday. Sig Zulu Wednesday, and even before that, I would assume somewhere between 12 to 15 hours before that, we're already going to start feeling her effects as she comes towards our state. Final, last but not least, let's conclude with National Hurricane Center. I'm eagerly awaiting the 5 p.m. update to see if they are going to mimic the trends east with some of the model ensembles that I've noticed over the last hour or two, or if they're going to stay steadfast with a more northern track towards the Big Bend area of Florida. Guys, we're going to keep this episode short and sweet. We're going to do daily updates, maybe even twice a day updates. So I'm going to try not to continue to rattle off hot air at y'all. So with that being said, let's start wrapping up the video. And with that, folks, we come to the conclusion of episode 12 of Weather Center Nazario. I understand if you feel I've left you with more ambiguity since we first started this episode and from yesterday. However, truthfully, that's exactly where we stand as of now. This storm continues to wander around and have a bit of a mind of its own, pretty much going against everything that we've anticipated up to this point, as I mentioned during the introduction. Us fellow weather enthusiasts and National Hurricane Center and official meteorologists far and wide will keep the community updated, especially those of us getting ready to hunker down here in the state of Florida. I urge you, please, to continue to keep in touch with all the news updates, with all of our weather updates, both on YouTube and other sources of social media. Please take heed, keep an eye out, because this is a very volatile, dynamic situation. There really is a whole lot of gray area ahead of us as we wait to see when she begins to transition off to the north. We're anticipating a lot of really good information from the reconnaissance aircraft. They have a few more missions in store for us over the next 12 hours, so we'll be in place monitoring and preparing to make updates as we see fit. With all that being said, guys, I really appreciate you tuning in. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.